everybody, this is Jen from Scrapping Posh, and I am here today with the Artistic Studio Creation Design Team project using the Garden Goddess collection. And I am just going to use the patterns and solids. <coughs> Excuse me. And today I am finally bringing you the hot air balloon tutorial. And the reason why it took so long is because I had to figure out how to get you the pattern. So, um,. Uh, if the Garden Goddess collection isn't available, which I believe it is right now, but if not, any paper will do. I really like the Graphic 45 for these because I use the uh, uh, Imagine collection, I think, for the last one. Um, I just got some smooth texture cardstock, and uh, since I'm using a light collection, I just got a, I don't know, a vanilla, an off white vanilla cream. And then. You'll need your templates, which I have downloaded on my Google Docs, and I will link that. Um, I will link a link to my blog downloads that has the the link to the Google Docs. Uh, it's in the free downloads section, and you just look for the picture of the balloon, and then it'll be in there and it looks just like this my apologies it is black on white so it's going to use a lot of black ink um no right now that this is not needed i'm not sure how that got there but this is going to be a straight cut <coughs> so i'm going to cut out these templates while we're talking um i have cardstock templates but i just want to do the entire pro pro process with you so that there aren't any questions and um, what else you the other thing you need is uh, anything that you, this doesn't have to have this doesn't have to have that it just needs something to this is just a tab so it doesn't have to have that cut out um, whatever you want to use to decorate it I am probably going to do some minimal decorations on this one and then possibly in another video show you guys how to put like the chain and stuff on if you guys want to see that so We're just going to cut out the templates here and then we're going to trace them and cut them out on the cardstock. And most of this doesn't have to be exact. Now you want your um, hexagon here to be exact and you want your score lines to be exact and your length but like the height this is the basket and I wrote basket on there for you this is the basket so as far as the height goes it kind of depends on how high you want your basket to be and if you wanted to do a different size like I'm going to do a couple different sizes but if you want to do a different size then um, you just shrink or what do you call it scale scale down the, the templates so I'm going to go ahead and cut all these out and then I'm going to cut them out of cardstock and come back and show you how to score them especially these with the curve score there's an easy way to do that oh and the other thing is is that I wrote on each one how many times you have to cut it out it's one for everything except for these two are five each those are the actual panels this is the under under layer which holds it all together and then this is the outer layer that gives you the smooth balloon texture or finish and the same with this this is like um 
the under layer and then this is the top so that you have like a decorative top on it and then on mine I also put some lace around it and I'll show you how to do that too so we'll be right back okay so I wanted to show you a little trick with these templates um the ones that have the tabs on them just cut the basic shape out and then go back in and trim the smaller pieces from the tabs because otherwise if you're like trying to like fussy cut them it's just not necessary and remember as long as these meet up and can, you can glue them together or tape them or however we decide to do it um, they're, they're not going to show like pretty much everything is covered with those other the smooth patterns here so and then to cut the basic shape you just go here and then just go from tab to tab without cutting the the little tabs in between and then go back in and I would actually do the same thing when I'm cutting the, the patterns. Now with the, or not the patterns, but the actual pieces. So with the actual pieces, when you trace these, if that's how you're doing it, you just need to stay as close as possible to the actual size because if these are too big, these ones that I have in my hands right here, the side panels, if these are too big or if they're different sizes, they're not going to meet up right. Um, and if they're too big and these are the right size, then these won't cover it completely. So, and this project does not take a lot of paper. I actually just cut like three pieces of paper. Um, from the uh, 12 by 12 and it's only going to take a few sheets of cardstock uh, probably like four 12 by 12s and you can do eight and a half by 11s but if you're doing the the bigger size it takes uh this is going to take a full sheet so you'll use actually more paper if you use eight and a half by 11. so And this is a 65 pound cardstock, and I find that it works good with uh, for almost anything. It doesn't matter if it's texture or not texture. I think that the smooth cardstock kind of sticks together better when you adhere it together. So but that's just my opinion. Now we should be able to get, I'm thinking, three of these per sheet. So I'm going to take a pencil, maybe, <coughs> trace around. And remember, you're not going to see this. This is on the inside. And then when you get to the ones that you will see, they're, um, symmetrical. This would be easier if I actually had traced and cut this out of cardstock because this is trying to move all over the place. Okay, so that gives about the right. I think I'm only going to be able to get two of these actually. 
two of these, and I think that's it. And I need five, so we're only going to use two, three pieces of paper, which, um, but I got these two. Oh, these I'm going to do on a different, I don't think I want this light color. I may do, I may pick another pattern paper, or I may pick, I'm not sure yet. It would be really cute to be like a, a terracotta pot since it's a garden collection. But. Um, like a white wicker would be cute. You can always like do um Oops. And you may say, well, why don't you cut one out and then use the cardstock for the other ones? And the answer is because when I said if one of them's bigger than the rest, it's not going to work right. <coughs> and this is already going to be bigger than this. So if I do it again, it's going to be bigger one more time. I don't want that. But I could have just printed them right out on cardstock. I could have printed them right out on the correct color cardstock. And then just use the printout. Uh, that's another possibility. And then you have your score lines right there. I'm tracing this kind of messy. And just knowing that um, if I have double lines, it has to be the outside line that I use to cut. Okay. And then you can note that the lines opposite the uh, tabs here are not like it's not one smooth side it's like from score mark to score mark it's a straight line think about what I'm going to do for the basket. Done with that one. Let's do this one. And this is supposed to be like a circle, but of course, when you cut something out by hand, it doesn't always look perfect, but that's okay. And I am drawing this or tracing this just like I cut it. I did the circle. And I'm going to go in and where the cuts are. And this is just, I mean, these are going to be tabs, so it's not horribly critical. But they do need to be pretty close. 
So now, this, see, here's the thing with this. If I go in like this, um, this, this circle, if I connect these lines here, it's going to be too big. So I'm going to put it back down. Actually, I'm going to color where and you have to use pencil or crayon for this. When you use pencil, you just color from score to score. On the back side, you put it back on there. Make sure it lines up. And now, if you trace your score lines with your pencil, you're going to get a transfer to the other side. And this one is most important as far as that goes. These are going to be pretty close because they were they were wider. If you can tell, see how wide they were, but these were so skinny I couldn't get to the points. So now that I transferred that on, I know where to cut. So you could see we would have lost a good quarter of an inch, if not better there. Okay, now I'm going to cut all these out the same way that I did the templates. And I'll be back. Okay, so I got all five um, sides cut out here. Uh, the inside sides. And you want to line them up and make sure they're approximately the same. And I think they're good enough, but one of the things that I realized once I cut them out is that how I pointed out from score line to score line here, it was a straight cut instead of a round cut. That's kind of significant. So um, I lost that when I traced it. So I'm going to do the, um, the transfer again. And if you guys have carbon paper, you can use that. Same thing. Um, charcoal works well. But you just, on the you know where the lines are approximately. You color those with the graphite pencil or whatever you have. You line it up on your template. All the way around. And then you can just trace your score lines. And what that's going to do is it's going to show you um, where these folds on this side should be. Okay, so I am going to do all five of these that way. And... And then, so you get a really good clear picture of where these lines, even though, you know, I lost them there, it's okay. You get a pretty good picture of where those lines go. And, let's see here. Just threw everything on the floor. And now, all, all of these are going to be the same. So let's go ahead and score this one. And then carry on. So all you have to do when you're scoring is make sure that you have a line under the top and the bottom. And as long as it's straight, 
the top and the bottom are on the same score line, you're going to end up with a good score. Okay, it's going to go from line to line. So just watch your, your bottom is in a score line and your top is in the same score line. Don't push too hard. So Now this one is it's gonna be a little crooked. There we go. That one, I think I missed a little here. This should be okay. And then this top one. And then this is a little curved, so super simple. You can take like a um, something squishy if you want. And then just go right along where you're supposed to score. Okay, and there we go. The last thing I'm going to do, and I don't have any of these cut, so I'm going to probably do it again, but I need to make sure that these panels cover the showing section of, of these. So after I cut my pattern paper, I'm going to just test fit it over that. So I'm going to do the other four of these, and then let's get this guy out. Another way you can score if you don't have a scoreboard. Grab a mouse pad or this is like a, a score pad or a what do you call it? A uh, pierce pad. In your ruler and score from line to line. almost pushed too hard there but it didn't go through so we're good if that happens you can always just reinforce it with some uh, washi tape or some uh, masking tape I one uses for washi tape All right. <clears throat> that one I didn't get I didn't get it good enough Okay, so what we have here is pretty much enough to, um, after I score all these, this is pretty much going to be enough to start our basic structure. I have to figure out what color I want my basket, and then this is the little part that goes around the bottom of the balloon, like where the gas thing is. I'm not a, I don't know anything about hot air balloons, so, um, so yeah, I've, this is going to be, like, I think I'm just going to do greens and yellows. So, I haven't really decided. I have no idea. So, I'm going to do these first and then be back. Okay, so I have all my legs, or not really legs, I don't know what you want to call them, um, sides cut 
and scored. And I just need to make sure that my tabs go all the way to the score lines. So I'm just making just a tiny cut because I don't want any interference later. And I haven't cut my other panels yet or my baskets or anything. So now is your chance to decide what kind of adhesive you want. And I think on the top piece I'm going to use score tape. And then to glue the sides of the balloon together I will use uh, just ATG. So see make sure that you get the sides that you've been working with up and how this is going to fit is the, the line right underneath this first tab fits right against this line so this tab kind of goes onto this flat spot so and it goes under so this it, it, this is these are the two good sides up they sit like this okay so I'm going to flip this one over and flip this over and then line them up like that I'm going to put one piece of score tape here and one here on each flap and then I will reinforce with ATG also. Um, you can use wet glue. I just think it takes a little bit longer to set than the score tape does. But remember, score tape is unforgiving. I suggest that you have a bottle of undo. handy. Okay, here and here. Okay, so remember we're working with the opposite sides on both of them and one flap at a time. And nothing else is going to touch the inside of this except for maybe if you decide to put a, I put a hook or a brad through mine to hook it up, which is a whole problem in itself and there's really no way around it. So, um, so basically just line this, you, you flip this up, you line that fold line with the fold line of your side and that's the way it looks like on the opposite side which is the side the out the side that goes out and then I just put some extra ATG tape in there now when you put the next one on they'll just keep um, like stacking up so just fold this one over Oh, um, you can like pre-fold these if you want. It's not a huge deal. Okay. So I'm going to take that off of there. The side that is the good side out. The good side is the, not the pretty side, it's the side you drew on. And then line it up with that fold and there you go and you do that with all five panels oh I forgot the ATG on this one just the, it's just extra you don't I mean you don't technically need that I like having that on there because um, 
Not that the score tape is going to fail, but it just it's just a little extra. Um, I almost put that on the wrong way. Yeah, that's right. And if you put them all on the the correct way, then um, all the tabs will be on the opposite side. will never be on the same side is what I'm trying to say. I need six of these. I've been telling you guys the wrong number this whole time. I will change it. should have known that because it's a hexagon. minor setback there. Pull this forward. I didn't need to teach you either one of these. Okay, and then um, another reason why you can use ATG on the um, actual like balloon itself is like you're not really going to be doing a whole lot with this. It's kind of just a decoration. So it doesn't need any stronger hold than that. Okay, so this is what you're left with. And now you just go through and you put, I, I'm gonna use ATG. You ATG each one of these tabs. Um, another factor is wet glue is heavier, depending on how much you use. So 
Okay, now what you do is you just line up this side with your score line here on each one. Give yourself a good stick and do it on the next one. Now, you're going to end up with a strange rounded effect. <laughs> And once you put your side panels on, it's kind of going to give you a concave effect, but this is going to give you a nice rounded effect. So if you've ever done like 3D paper sculptures, you'll know what I'm talking about. If you have not, it'll be an experience because as you're putting this together you're like wow you know these straight edges are kind of turning into something rounded okay. and this one we may have to um, do a different kind of glue on because it's going to be hard to get to. Okay, so like this one here. I'll turn around backwards to put the ATG on. Okay. And you just keep doing the same thing over again. Okay, see. Now, nothing's perfect, right? Because we did this all by hand, so you may end up with some spots that don't come together exactly right, but it'll be okay. Just, just line the score lines up, and if you don't think it looks right, then just adjust it by hand. These can't be perfect. We're doing them by hand. Once you get so rounded, just flip it over, pull all your tabs down, and put the glue on them that way.
one I glued a little too far up, but I think we'll still be alright. You see how this the score lines are just a little far up? I think we'll still be okay. I'm gonna go back while I still can. There's still two panels missing. And just press down on these tabs to make sure they're all functioning. the side. It's the best you can. having problems with this one and I'm pretty sure it's just that I have the score line in the wrong place so I'm going to maneuver that One more panel to go. So I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and put tape on these. Just the same way we have been doing. And then, because I want these to stay on the inside, and I won't be able to glue them later, I'm going to put some wet glue on them now. And we'll just have to work a little faster. This gets tucked in. And again, line up your side with your score lines. And I'm getting glue all over myself, just so you know. There we go. And the more round it gets, the harder it gets to maneuver. Oh, I missed that one totally.
come. Oh, I got some glue on there. I'm going to stick my whole hand in here because that's really the only way to do it. So I can position these. Now, if you were doing a smaller one, I really have no idea. Because I've not done one, but I'm assuming you'll have to find something to um, kind of stick in the base because your hand won't fit in the base to get things where you want them. I'm still not exact. I may end up putting some score tape on this so that it's it's not sticking the way I want it to. Yeah, so, alright, plan B. Score tape on each one. That'll hold her. So one at a time, tuck it under. You just gotta make sure you get it in a good placement the first time. I like that better. Okay. Ditch the wet glue. The score tape is easier to maneuver. So far, anyways. There you guys go. It's already starting to look like a balloon. Alright, I'm going to cut some panels out and figure out what color I'm going to do this base in the basket. And we'll be back. <laughs> 